Hi friends, and welcome to your daily devotional for Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. This is our final week of daily video devotions. I will be taking some Sabbath time, and as viewership has decreased, it seems that we have come to a natural end. Thank you so much for joining me in exploring scripture, and I hope that you will continue to dig in on your own. All this month, we have been talking about sanctuary, and this week in particular, we are looking at what it means to be in awe of God. One definition of awe is feeling reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. What does that concept of reverential respect mean to you? Our word from the psalmist today comes from Psalm 18. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 6 and then continuing on with 43 through 50. And this is from the Message Bible. Listen now for God's word to us. I love you, God. You make me strong. God is bedrock under my feet, the castle in which I live, my rescuing night. My God, the high crag where I run for dear life, hiding behind the boulders, safe in the granite hideout. I sing to God the praise lofty and find myself safe and saved. The hangman's noose was tight at my throat. Devil's waters rushed over me. Hell's ropes cinched me tight. Death traps barred every exit, a hostile world. I call to God, I cry to God to help me. From his palace, he hears my call. My cry brings me right into his presence, a private audience. You rescued me from a squabbling people. You made me a leader of nations, people I'd never heard of served me. The moment they got wind of me, they listened. The foreign devils gave up. They came out on their bellies, crawling from their hideouts. Live, God. Blessings from my rock, my free and freeing God, towering. This God set things right for me and shut up the people who talked back. He rescued me from enemy anger. He pulled me from the grip of upstarts. He saved me from bullies. That's why I'm thanking you, God, over all the world. That's why I'm singing songs that rhyme to your name. God's king takes the trophy. God's chosen is beloved. I mean David and all his children, always. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, the air sings with songs of glory. Water flashes silver with creation and the forests bloom with leaves for healing nations. May your light and love fill our hearts and souls and minds that we may share your love with the world. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from 1 Samuel, chapter 31, verses 1 through 13 from the Common English Bible. Listen for God's word. When the Philistines attacked the Israelites, the Israelites ran away from the Philistines, and many fell dead on Mount Geboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, And they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The battle was fierce around Saul. When the archers located him, they wounded him badly. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and kill me with it. Otherwise, these uncircumcised men will come and kill me 
or torture me. But his armor bearer refused because he was terrified. So Saul took the sword and impaled himself on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also impaled himself on his sword and died with Saul. So Saul, his three sons, his armor bearer, and all his soldiers died together that day. When the Israelites across the valley and across the Jordan learned that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their towns and fled. So the Philistines came and occupied the towns. The next day when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons lying on Mount Gilboa. They cut off Saul's head and stripped off his armor and then sent word throughout Philistine territory carrying the good news to their God's temples and to their people. They put Saul's armor in the temple of Astarte and hung his body on the wall of Beth Shan. But when all the people of Jabesh Gilead heard that the Philistines had done this to Saul, the bravest of their men set out, traveled all night long, and took the bodies of Saul and his sons off the wall of Beth Shan. Then they went back to Jabesh, where they burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. This was not just a deadly attack. It was an outlandish slaughter meant to make a point. What do you think of the Philistines' behavior? Our New Testament reading today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 5 from the New International Version. Listen again for God's word to us. There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and in your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you have promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almost in the same breath, Paul says that he boasts about the people in Corinth Yet he doesn't fully trust that they are strong enough in their faith. If you were a recipient of this letter, how would that make you feel? Let us pray. God, our desire, whose coming we look for, but whose arrival is unexpected, here in the darkness, make us urgent to greet you and open yourself to our longing that we may be known by you through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Friends, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the journey. Go in peace. I'll see you tomorrow.